This is Jeff at Slavens Racing and this video is about how to rebuild the electric starter motor on KTM 250s and 300s and Husaberg 250s and 300s. Uh, these are fairly small starter motors and they're, they're light duty. They won't take a lot of abuse so they do need to be serviced regularly. Um, if you change, clean them and change the brushes once a year then the armature will last longer, but this video is about how to do a total rebuild. And so first of all you'd want to uh, get a rebuild kit. We sell them here at slavensracing.com and the rebuild kit comes with a new armature, the brush holding plate, the two brushes, uh, the seal, oil, um, oil seal, I guess it's actually more of a dust seal, um, a bearing, and a bushing and then the brush springs and the spacer plates there. And then you should get your tools arranged first. Um, it doesn't take much for this job. You're going to need uh, an 8 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter wrench, an open end or a box end. This ratchet is just for this socket assembly here. And a screwdriver. And then some car uh, contact cleaner. <clears throat> This is a, a good brand. It's called Worth uh, Brake and Parts Cleaner. We use here um, Zep Brake Wash. I would not use a carburetor cleaner. A lot of carburetor cleaners are very strong and can damage O-rings and plastic, plastic and rubber pieces. So I would not recommend that f for this application. So the first thing you need to do is take this apart. I've already loosened these bolts. There's just two bolts that hold the starter together. With these two long ones, but actually before that, you should you should either make some scribes on here so you know how these there's pieces go back together because there's three pieces to this housing one two three, and from the factory they've got a mark right here and a mark here and then they've got little uh, raised areas on the casting here and those all need to line up, but uh, if you want to go even further than that you can just take like an exacto knife and make marks on it. Just make a, a scribe mark across here and here and across here and here. That way you have an idea how things should line up when you go to put it back together. So just take these long bolts out and then I usually take this gear drive end off first and this washer, it's actually a metal and fiber washer together. Yep, there's two of them here. Those run this far, they usually stick to this far end, but sometimes they'll stick here. But you just want to make note of those. Those run this shaft. They're usually stuck on this housing on this end. And then you need to pull this end off, and it's got the brushes in it. There's brushes and springs in here, and those springs will shoot out of there, and you won't know where they go. They just look like springs out of an ink pen. They're cheesy little springs. And this end also has some shims on it, but it doesn't have those um, fiber ones. It just has some regular metal shims. And this there's two, and I think there's a third one on here. Yes, there is. So this one actually has three shims on it. There's different amounts on them. They're not all the same. So now this appears to be stuck in here, but it's actually just magnets holding it in there. And it feels stuck. But you just pull it on out of there. Now the first, one of the first things I notice about this is the whole thing stinks. It smells burnt. That's a sign that this armature needs to be thrown away. Even if it wasn't burnt, didn't have that burnt smell. You can't see it in the video probably, but this surface here where the brushes ride has a big groove in it. The brushes were left in way too long and they wore a groove in here when it should look like this. It should be a nice flat surface. Now if you're on a really tight budget or in some location where you couldn't get one of these kits but maybe you could get your hands on some brushes, <coughs> we do sell the brushes separately. Uh, you could possibly put this in a lathe 
and 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 turn this down a little bit and true up the surface and it would be usable for a little while but this one because it smells I su suspect it's got issues beyond that so from there you, um, you've got to take this brush plate out of here and the brush plate screws are small and people always want to use the small the wrong size screwdriver on them I mean this looks like the right size for that but it's actually too small and these are in there fairly tight I mean I've already loosened these up but they were in there pretty tight one of them was actually stuck but this is the screwdriver that fits better and you always want to make sure no matter what size you're using that it's that it fits correctly and it's got a good tip on it that it's not worn out otherwise you're just going to round the screw off and you have a mess on your hands so as I've said in other videos impact is always the way to get something out of there and you have to move over here to this vise so on, on, what I would do is open the vise up wide enough to fit this round section here in so that the vise jaws fit he, here and here that way it sits in there without rocking back and forth then I just take this screwdriver and set on the screw, put it on the screw, and I just hit it a time or two with a small hammer, and then it loosens it right up and it will come right out. If you feel like it's stuck at all, do not continue on and round the thing out. Um, always loosen them up first with impact. So take that screw out. It also has a washer on it, which it's hard to see because these things are really grubby on the inside. And then there's uh, another one in here. I don't know if you can see this well enough. But here's the one I removed and here's the next one. So this one holds the brush in and the other one just hold, helps hold the brush plate in. So now in order to get the, the other one out, we're going to have to take this bolt uh, out of here, but I believe this brush plate has to come out first. Yes, it does. All right, so the brush plate just pulls right out. And you might make note of how it's in there. There's a cutout here that matches this big area where the bolt and the brush is there. So just make a mental note of that. And then in order to get this one out, you've got to take a 10 millimeter wrench and loosen this up and there's just uh, the nut, then there's a metal washer, then there's a fiber washer, and there's two smaller fiber washers, and then there's also a rubber grommet in there. And this comes right out. So you can see that these brushes were left in here way too long. There's hardly anything left of them. This is what it's supposed to look like. On my right, and this is what it, what's left. It's, it's worn all the way down to the wire. If these had been changed a long time ago, they wouldn't have chewed up the armature like that. So the next step from here, before you reassemble it with new parts and pieces, <coughs> excuse me, is to clean everything. And that's where your contact cleaner comes in. You just use the contact cleaner and like a toothbrush or some small brush and get in here and scrub everything really well. Scrub it and blow it out with air. You have to scrub the inside of this and scrub the inside of this end. Get everything spotless. Uh, this brush plate's going to be replaced, so is this. So take your other, all your old parts and set them aside and scrub everything really well. And then on our next video, we'll show you how to reassemble it. That's all for now.